There really is no more exciting time of the year for me than when I receive my trail permit from the Ontario Federation of Snowmobile Clubs, the OFSC. It's also a time of the year which sparks a lot of debate amongst my buddies who ride snowmobiles. There really is a question about whether or not this $200 piece of plastic is really worth it or not, and whether or not they want to continue snowmobiling and supporting the sport as a whole. Well, today, I'm going to replace my 2021 trail pass with my newly arrived 2022 trail pass. I'll show you how to get that sticker off and how to mount the new one. But also, I'm going to talk a little bit about what my thoughts are and my thinking on the value of this trail pass. So sit back, grab yourself something warm to drink, and enjoy Dino's Tanker Shed. To get the sticker off, you really need a few things. You're gonna need a hair dryer or a heat gun if you've got really steady hands. Um, a good set of fingernails, or in my case, I'm gonna use a plastic razor blade, and then some kind of solvent to get the rest of the adhesive off. Something like rubbing alcohol, maybe uh, WD-40, or even this Goo Gone if it's really, really stuck on there. Now, I sort of talked about living in different regions, you probably have different opinions on the uh, OFSC. I think if you live somewhere in Northern Ontario, say Cochrane or, or maybe Sudbury or something like that, there really is a lot greater value to be had to the sticker. The fact that you can pretty much leave your house and get on a trail and ride pretty much every day if you really wanted to, makes that $200 investment make a lot of sense. Now, now someone like me, who lives in Niagara Falls, which is one of the most southern areas in Canada, snowmobiling really is a travel hobby. So if I want to sled, I need to load my uh, snowmobile up in my trailer and travel a minimum of three hours. And more often than not, to guarantee snow, if you're, say, planning a trip in February, you're gonna have to go even further. So I'm driving five, maybe six hours and staying three or four nights at a hotel, maybe up to Cochrane or North Bay is another great example. Now, this really does put a lot of pressure. There's a lot more expense, there's, there's lodging, you're staying overnight. So you start to question whether or not that, that uh, the hobby in general, not necessarily the trail pass, is really uh, value or not. It's something you have to think about. For me, and I think most snowmobilers, a membership with the Ontario Federation of Snowmobile Clubs really is a no-brainer. I mean, prior to 1967, Ontario really had no governing body. There was a multitude of small, independently run snowmobile clubs throughout Ontario, which meant if you wanted to ride in multiple areas, well, you needed to be a member of multiple clubs. The riding experience could be much different, the signage may be different depending on where you rode, and overall, the, the overall experience wasn't that good. I'm gonna use this heat gun to heat this sticker up, I think, to start with to get this off. Let's do that. Of course, things weren't as bad as I make it sound. In reality, in the 60s and even into the 70s, the thought of riding a snowmobile for more than a couple hours a day, let alone uh, a couple day trip, was really not something that was too common amongst riders. However, even at this time, there were visionary minds at work who could see where the sport was going and what it could be with some leadership. So on February 4th, 1967, the Heronius Snow Riders of Midland, Ontario invited 16 other snowmobile clubs from across Ontario. They met at a summit and the result was what we know today as the Ontario Federation of Snowmobile Clubs, at least in its infancy. 
I gotta heat this up a little bit more to get this sticker off. It's not bad, but we need a little more heat. One of the things most snowmobilers will tell you is how impressed they are with the amount of information the OFSC pushes out each year to snowmobilers. Now, at the most rudimentary level, each one of the 17 districts produces a paper-based map every single year. Now, these maps show you trail changes from the past year. They show you all of their trail networks within their region, the types of trails, uh, how they join up, and they also show you very important things like points of interest, maybe scenic lookouts, where to get food or lodging. They even have local businesses like snowmobile shops or um, tow centers that can help you out. So it's a really great condensed form of information that you can throw in your backpack or in your glove box and you have it with you all the time. Now for a number of years, the OFSC has had an interactive trail map on their website. So you can go to that sitting in your underwear at home on the computer and call up the trail maps and see A, what's changed from last year. You can plan your route out. It'll give you mileages and, and um, fuel stops. All the same information is interactive on that trail map. But most importantly, is it will tell you the conditions of each and every single trail throughout Ontario. So green, well that means it's great. It's in great shape, it's wide open, ready to go. Yellow is maybe there's some slushy parts that you have to watch out for, but it is passable, be cautious. And red, well that means stay off the trail, it's closed. Now recently they've released an app for your phone and, and my understanding is that's gonna be available on BRP's system as well this year on their app. And this gives you real-time information similar to the website on your cell phone. It really is great technology and it makes your riding experience that much better. I almost have this stuff off. It's looking good. Okay, that wasn't too hard. I think I'll try alcohol to get the remainder of that adhesive off. You know, since 1967, the Ontario Federation of Snowmobile Clubs has really worked hard with both the provincial government, local municipalities and business owners, and private landowners. There's over 18,000 individual landowners that the Ontario Federation of Snowmobile Clubs has agreements with. Now those agreements allow us as riders to travel across private property and ensure that we have those 30,000 kilometers plus of trails available to us. Now, they also have grown from that initial 16 clubs to 186 clubs across Ontario. Now, personally, I belong to the Blind River Snow Riders Club. Now, I do this because my parents have had a camp in Blind River since the early 80s. And I'm really happy to be able to support both the riding club there and the local economy with both uh, my membership and the maintenance of those trails that brings income into Blind River and the surrounding communities throughout the winter months. Let's try this out. Woohoo! Well, that did it. We didn't need anything more than alcohol to get that adhesive off. You know, the OFSC is also a, it's a non-profit organization. All the money it earns goes back into promoting the sport. And they also have over 6,000 volunteers. Now, these volunteers are the people that get out there in the fall and they fix bridges. They brush out trails to make sure that there's access to all of the uh, trails that are in their area. And they're also the ones that are out there both staking and removing the stakes off the lake every year. 
One of the biggest costs is the groomers. The OFSC maintains a fleet of 300 snowcat groomers that are out there grooming the trails and making them comfortable to ride. Now those may need maintenance, they need fuel, and they need operators to keep those machines out and doing their jobs. And anybody who has ridden on a Sunday afternoon, especially like on a long weekend, knows the value of good grooming. Without a groomer, the trails would pretty much be unrideable. Okay, that alcohol's cleaned that up. I think we can start looking at putting the new sticker on. Okay, for this, I'm going to line this up the center line of the windshield. I'll just peel off the bottom first. I'll stick that down and then I'll gently work it up the spine. This is a tricky part for me. Now, I want to talk a little bit about the volunteers again. As I said, there's 18,000 volunteers that allow access to their land. That's pretty good. I'm just going to roll this down the sides. Um, and those relationships are something that the OFSC take very seriously. I have to understand a lot of the canvassing for those land use agreements comes from local clubs, friends to friends, sometimes family to family, to get access for you and I to ride on those lands. Now, I don't know about you, but when a friend of mine or family member comes up and gives their word that they're going to protect my property, I take it pretty seriously. But one of the biggest threats that the OFC has to deal with is riders that are riding off of sanction trails and out onto private property. This, more than anything, poses the number one risk to the success of our sport. And it really burns my butt when I see people off trail on someone else's property threatening the uh, ability for me to ride, but moreover, it threatens the respect that the OFSC has built up with these landowners. So if you happen to see someone out there and you feel comfortable enough, give them a shout. If not, try to figure out who they are and report them to the local clubs. Every, every sled has numbers on the side. If you can get a shaft shot of it, that'd be great. But it's really up to us to set the example and make sure that this sport is around for years to come. I want to make sure that anybody that comes after me has the same excitement and the same thrill that I have. Well, it's pretty good. I think, I, I think that's going to do. This looks great. Black on black might be the best look for this sled. Now on top of the OFSC sticker, you're also going to need to have your sled registered with the Ontario government and have a valid license sticker on your snowmobile. And you're going to need to carry proof of insurance when you're riding on OFSC trails. Now, if you are from out of province or from out of country, say the United States, check the website for the OFSC and they'll tell you what you're going to need to ride on these trails. Even though the OFSC is a not-for-profit, they still manage to generate oh, hundreds of thousands of dollars for their charity of choice, the Easter Seals. And they also, uh, through snowmobiling, generate an estimated $3.3 billion in economic revenue every single year for Ontario based on a 2019 study. Now, it is the second most important recreational revenue generator in Ontario, second only to sport fishing. Now, you come back to the $200 for the sticker, is it really value? Is it really worth it? Well, I can't speak for everybody, but for me, I get out on average about 15 to 20 days a year riding. Now, if I was to say select a sport like downhill skiing, you can spend over $100 a day for a lift ticket to some of the more premium uh, ski hills around Ontario. Now, I realize it's really apples to oranges. There's a lot, I think, a lot more investment in snowmobiles in terms of insurance and trailers and trucks to tow you around with. 
but I still find um, the investment that I make is really well worth it. I mean, I get to see parts of Ontario that you really can't see any other way other than on a snowmobile. Even my adventure biking on DR650s doesn't take you to as many unusual places as you can get on a snowmobile. Now, if you've never tried snowmobiling, I would recommend you find a friend to see if they'll take you out for the day if they have a spare sled. And if not, take a Google search and you'll be able to find many, many places throughout Ontario that rent snowmobiles. Most of them either with an Ace 6 or an Ace 900 like this machine. They'll even rent you the clothing. And between the modern day uh, technical clothing and the design of these snowmobiles, it really is not as cold as you probably think it is. Between the heated thumbs, the heated grips, and even on this one, a heated seat, well, you can ride all day. I've put three, four, five hundred kilometers a day on this without any problem, especially with the modern suspension. So in closing, I'd just like to thank those 18,000 plus landowners and 6,000 plus volunteers. I'd like to give a heartfelt thanks out to you. You make my sport possible and just bring a great amount of joy to a lot of people. So until next time, I'm Dino for Dino's Tinker Shed. You have yourself a great day and I'll see you soon. Bye now.